very appreciative of the invitation from Americans for Peace now to, to, to speak with you today. We have had a warm and productive relationship for years. I admire and I share your firm commitment to peace, even on those occasions, uh, since it's been mentioned four times, that we sometimes <laughs> disagree about it. <laughs> Furthermore, APN is among the most reliable and valuable sources of information about the peace process, especially regarding Israeli settlements in the West Bank. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've spent in my office or poring over maps with the knowledgeable and articulate policy director of APN, Lara Friedman, who was mentioned earlier, as well as the Jerusalem expert, non parallel Dan, Danny Seidemann, who has frequently accompanied her. Throughout my nearly three decades in Congress, and now as chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, I have been preoccupied with issues involving Israel's security and Middle East peace. I made my first congressional trip to Israel in 1983. It was then that I first began to discern the primary problem Israel would have to face if it maintained its hold on the West Bank and Gaza. Either it would eventually have to rule over a disenfranchised Palestinian majority, or if it enfranchised the Palestinians, Israel would eventually cease to be a Jewish homeland. Call it the democracy demography problem. I knew I wanted Israel as a Jewish homeland to be a democracy. That was 1983. I wasn't probably totally convinced at that immediate moment that the answer was Palestinian statehood. I'm not sure I knew what the answer was. But over the years, as I've made more trips to Israel and the region, I've discovered two things. First, I learned that there are indeed many Palestinians who are prepared to accept Israel and who genuinely, genuinely believe in coexistence. Second, I discovered the immense toll the occupation was taking on Israel. Like Ariel Sharon, I came to believe, uh, and although I came to it earlier than he did, and I quote from him here, to hold three and a half million Palestinians under occupation. I believe that is a terrible thing for Israel and for the Palestinians. It cannot continue endlessly. Do you want to stay forever in Janine, and Nablus, and Ramallah, and Bethlehem? I don't think that's right. Over the years, I have seen periods of close American involvement in the peace process and times of relative disengagement. Like you, I believe that a final resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict will require robust U.S. engagement in the Middle East peace process. In that regard, it is encouraging to see that the Obama administration is fully engaged in the quest for peace between Israel and its neighbors. I have immense respect for George Mitchell, who has made numerous trips to the region in his pursuit of a diplomatic solution. And one of the reasons I respect Americans for peace now is that the members and its leaders come to their position not like some on the left, because Israel's survival is not important and security is not important to them, but in fact, for just the opposite reason. They come to their position because it is important to them. And that is very important, and I cannot overstate the role you have in forcing those of us in positions to be challenged with conventional assumptions about how to go forward. I look forward to continuing a close relationship with APN both in an, agreement and, in an agreement and otherwise. You've been an informative, creative partner for me in the Middle East policy debates, and I'll continue to be intimately involved with you in that discussion, fully assured that our main objectives, a secure Israel, an independent Palestine, and a peaceful Middle East, remain the same. Thank you very much.